today we are discussing about pedagogical consideration of language learning uh, it explains the relationship uh, between language and society gender communication culture thought etc okay let us see the first one language and society we know that language and society go side by side and that one cannot understand the development of a language change if the social life of community in which it occurs is not taken into account language operates under a continuous pressure from the society and often incorporates such pressure by showing or accepting some variation in its form a change in society is bound to lead to a change in language however this change is not a simple phenomenon even though it can be correlated to the social change language is a both a system of communication between individual and a social phenomenon the area of language and society or social linguistics is intended to show how our use of language is governed by such factors as class gender race etc a subsection of this area is anthropological linguistics which is concerned with the form and usage of language different cultures and to what extent the development of language has been influenced by cultural environment raymond hickey in his language and society explains that the study of language and society or social linguistics can be dated to about the middle of the 20th century before that there were others who commented on how language use was influenced influenced or indeed guided by socially relevant factors such as class profession age or gender indeed the father of modern linguistics ferdinand de saussure so language as a type of social behavior now you, you can watch a video related to the topic language and society hello to everyone today we are going to talk about language and society social strata in this short video was performed by john jairo jaramillo and andres felipe villa muñoz language and society what is language is essentially a set of items called linguistics items sounds words and grammatical structures talking about society social theorists particularly sociologists attempt to understand how societies are, stru are structured and how people manage to live together in the relationship between language and society we can say that social structures may either in influence or determine linguistics structure and or behavior and according to Wolfian linguistics structure and or behavior may either influence or determine social structures in our point of view language and society influence each other Normer Dittmar states that speech behavior and social behavior are in a state of constant interaction and that material living condition as he call it are important factor in that relationship moreover the sociology of language or macro sociologistics studies that uh, societies do with the language that is attitudes and attachments that account for the functional distribution of speech forms in society language shift maintenance and replacements the delimitation and interaction of speech communities for example the macrolinguistics notes that the norman invasion brought french to the english language when william the conqueror led the norman conquest of england in 1066 to talk about sociolinguistics or micro sociolinguistics which investigates how social structure influences the way people talk and how language varieties and patterns of use correlate with social attributes such as class sex and age for instance the microlinguistics wonder why cow meat is called beef cheap meat is called mouton Big meat is called pork, etc. Note that the French word for cow is boeuf. The French word for chip is mouton. The French word for pig is pork. Together, the linguists realized that the French invaders, whose servants were the conqueror English peasants, ordered their meals using the French words. So, the food names that the servant got used to were the French terms entered into the English language in that way. Consequently to this, 
Social stratification is a society's categorization of people in socioeconomic strata based upon their occupation and income, wealth and social status, or derived power, social and political. As such, stratification is the relative social position of persons within a social group, category, geographic region, or social unit. In modern Western societies, social stratification typically is distinguished in three social classes, the upper class, the middle class, and the lower class. Moreover, a social stratum can be formed upon the basis of kinship or caste or both. In the link below, you will watch a perfect example of how language and society interact on the influence of social stratification how to evidence those changes in the different social status according to the video. Let's start with tag phrases. We can hear the lower class guy tends to tell, you know, I mean, got everything. On the contrary, the higher class people have a more formal speech. Contractions and abbreviations. The former makes phrases shorter, such as in, got all, the later used to say the complete phrases. Domination and control, where high classes want to demonstrate the power and control under the lower classes. Corporal language, it can be observed that the composure and attitude between the two different classes can be remarkable. Pace and diction is faster in poor classes, and diction is a style of speaking or writing as dependent upon choice of words. Good diction, the accent, inflection, intonation, on speech sound quality. Uh, manifested by individual speaker usually judged in terms of prevailing standard of acceptability. Thank you for your attention watching the video and we hope the information shared today has been useful. Next we come to the point language and identity. What is identity and what is the role of language in forming national, ethnic or local identity? Further, what is the influence or roles of one's perception of identity upon language they speak? If you go for a dictionary definition of identity, we will come with something like who a person is or the qualities of a person or group which make them different from others. It is the second part of the definition, qualities of a group, which is the most interest to us. For a local group, with their identity is defined by a shared set of qualities or values such as culture, language, ethics, etc. in a relatively small geographically confined space. Ethnic identity takes account of matters such as shared religion, race, culture and language. A local identity may function as a subset of ethnic or national identity. National identity is a matter of all these on a larger scale combined with a political desire of autonomy. Language certainly falls into the category such as qualities which determine or influence a group of na nations perception of their identity. It goes along with their culture, social norms, religion and race and plays a sentimental and emotional role in exercising its grip on the group. Language and its relationship with perceived identity is twofold. There is an out-group symbolic value of their language, which is a kind of sentimental and emotional attachment with it. I am different from you because of the language I speak. For example, in Pakistan, certain speakers of Northwest Frontier province often identify themselves as I am a Pashtun. Here language is used in a marker of identity. This identification classifies the speaker into the certain larger ethnic or group. In contrast to out group identity, in group identity involves adhering to a particular variety of language to mark or mark local or social identity within a larger context. It is however crucial to note that these out group and in group identity relations are flexible and relative. Now you can watch the relationship between language and identity.
created using Powtoon. Next we can see uh, the relationship between language and power. The study on the relationship between language and power has clearly shifted from proving the existence of this relationship to probing and understanding its underpinnings and implications. Most linguists now agree that the relationship between language and power is a mutual relation. Powerful institutions and individuals use language as a both means to construct their power and as a way to maintain it. Language thus becomes necessary for the maintenance of power and the power and the effect of language in turn rely on the uh, power. Scholars namely Fowler and Kramer uh, skulls have supported the view that power is developed and maintained via interaction. These scholars argue that language or discourse serve to construct and manipulate concepts of power in society, of individuals and institutions themselves. Just li listen what Paolo Freire are telling about language and power. Who, who says that this accent or that this way of, of thinking is, is the, the culture, cult, the cultivate one? If there is one which is cultivated, there is, this is because there is another one which is not. Mm -hmm. Do you see, it's impossible to think of, of, of that without, of language without thinking of ideology and the power. I defend the duty of the teachers to teach the cultivated pattern and I defend the right of the kids or of the adults to learn the dominant pattern. But it is necessary in being a democratic, tolerant teacher, it is necessary to, to explicitly, to make clear to the clear to the, the kids or to the adults that their way of speaking is as beautiful as our way of speaking. Second, that they have the right to speak like this. Third, nevertheless, they need to learn the so-called dominant syntax for different reasons. That is, the more the oppressed, the poor people, get the comment on the dominant syntax, the more they can articulate their voices and their speech in the struggle against the injustice. Now we can see language and gender, relationship between language and gender. There is a close connection between the structures, vocabularies and the way, ways of using language and social roles of men and women who speak the language. Why there are different varieties for men and why there, there are three different varieties uh, of language for men and women? Do men and women use language in the same way? Why do these differences arise? Is it because of the structures of that language? or because of the norms of the society which prescribe the ways and of men and women should use the language. Now you can watch a video about language and gender.
The relationship between culture, language and thought has a long been one of the most important topics for those who wish to understand the nature of human cognition. This issue has been investigated for decades across a broad range of research disciplines. However, there has been a scant communication across these different disciplines. A situation largely arising through differences in research interest and discrepan discrepancies in the definition of the key terms such as culture, language and thought. We then review recent research conducted in interdisciplinary perspectives which directly compared the roles of culture and language. These uh, results highlight the importance of considering complex interplay between culture and language to provide a comprehensive picture of how language and culture affect thought. Language is the basic means of communication in every culture. Language ex expresses cultural reality of the speakers in every society. It is, it is a socially occurred phenomenon and all the culturally bound language differ dramatically from one another in terms of description of the natural world. Language not only embodies a cultural reality, but it is also viewed as a symbol of social identity. This assignment explores different ways in which words, world is described by the speakers of different languages due to their cultural diversity and its effect on different ways of thinking about the world. Many more studies, uh, many studies conducted in this area. Uh, from the study, uh, it reviews that the description of spatial terms, temporal terms, substances and objects by different speakers of different languages belonging to different cultures and it is and its effect on the ways of thinking about the world around us. The word culture is etymologically derived from the Latin word cultura which means to cultivate and different philosophers such as Walter, Hegel, Humboldt and Kant this assign different meaning to it. In antiquity, culture was referred to the opposite of nature, something that is willingly produced by man. In the 18th century, uh, the term was used to describe elite and high culture concepts in continental Europe. Next we can see what is relationship between language and communication. Language is a complex phenomenon for human communications. In the domain of communication, each language of the world is different from the other on both lingual and cultural grounds. This diversity in world languages from linguistic standpoints range from clear distinction of pronunciation and vocabulary to the more complex differences of grammar. The diversity of cultural standpoints related to the different languages can be seen the variety of cultural connotations assigned to these linguistic codes. The representation adopted by different language to uh, the same sentence such as the professor delivered the lecture is different to culture. Langu uh, language is not only a mean of expressing experience, but it also creates experience. Speakers giving, uh, give meaning to such an experience through various mediums such as mass media, internet, telephonic conversation, and presentation, etc. In uh, every uh, society, the collective set of social values, beliefs, norms and mores and mores transmitted from one generation to another by the process of socialization. Hence, culture is socially acquired knowledge. If you observe language from this standpoint, it is observable that language is also transmitted from one generation to another through the process of socialization. It is therefore evident that language is also a socially acquired knowledge. Finally, the speakers of language identify themselves with a particular group through their peculiar way of using language. This characteristics of individuals in a group signify that language is viewed as a symbol of social identity. Hence, we can say that language symbolized culture. When we reach into the conclusion, we can understand that society, identity, power, gender, culture and thought and communication are strongly related to language. As Oren points out, language cannot exist and develop outside the society. Development of language is ultimately stimulated by our cultural uh, heritage and the needs of social development, but we should not overlook the reverse dependence each, either. An individual creates the patterns of behavior in terms of the groups with which, the, which she uh, wishes to identify. 
acquiring in the process process communicative competence that equips her to move along a continuum varying from formal to informal language it is generally the uh, language used by the elite that acquires power in the society and becomes standard language the relationship between language and gender has long been of interest within sociolinguistics and related disciplines